TCP Midstreams plans to build a massive 138-foot-tall, 22.7 million gallon liquefied natural or liquefied propane gas facility in Searsport, are dividing the people of the town and leaving residents of surrounding areas wondering if they have any say at all in the matter. What risks might the facility pose? What will be the impact on the environment and the tourism industry? And will the jobs generated by the facility offset those risks? I'm Amy Brown, and for the next two hours, we'll be discussing those issues with guests here in the studio and later in the program taking your calls. WERU has preempted our regular programming tonight to give listeners who normally are at work during our regular news call-in show times a chance to listen and participate in this conversation as well. Our guests here in the studio tonight are Searsport Emergency Management Director Bud Rivers, who supports DCP's proposal, Searsport resident and local business owner Astrid Tangway, and Peter Tabor, also a Searsport resident, both of whom oppose the LPG proposal. Officials from LCP or DCP Midstream declined our invitation to join us tonight, so we'll use some excerpts from their presentation on January 26th in Searsport to allow listeners to hear what they had to say. And we'll be checking in with our guests in just a few minutes. But first, I want to give an overview of the company and the project. DCP stands for Duke ConocoPhillips, though Duke Energy is no longer an owner. Spectra Energy owns 50% of the company, and ConocoPhillips, soon to be Phillips 66, owns the other 50%. At the public meeting two weeks ago, DCP staff described the company and their safety record, and here is a clip. My name is Bill Walheim, and I'm president of DCP's Natural Gas and Natural Gas Liquids Business Unit. We, uh, we're a large company, and i uh, like to know a little bit about the company. Uh, we are the nation's largest gas processor. We process, we have over 60 gas plants and operate over 58,000 miles of pipeline throughout the U.S. We also operate several natural gas and propane storage and import facilities and terminals. So we're a large company, and we also are the nation's largest producer of natural gas liquids. Which brings us to New England. We're also the nation's, or the New England's area, largest supplier of propane to this area. We bring propane into this area via pipeline, via rail, and waterborne imports. Much of the rail comes from the United States and Canada, whereas a lot of the waterborne imports come from the North Sea. We like to say the diversity of supply actually gives us the surety of supply for everybody on that cold winter night. DCP says a propane shortage back in 2007 that was prompted by a Canadian rail strike uh, is part of what made them decide that they needed to build a facility here in Maine. They also say that they got apparently multiple phone calls from then Governor uh, Baldacci, who also was the one who suggested the location at Mac Point. They say that the site at Mac Point is attractive to them because of its location mid-state and because of the existing port and rail infrastructure. The proposed LPG terminal would operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it would have a propane flare that could operate several hours each year if needed. Between four and eight LPG ships would arrive at the terminal each year, and DCP has applied for permission to add 9,000 LPG truck trips to and from the facility per year. DCP says the actual number of trucks would be fewer and that they would put more trucks on the road in the winter than in the summer. They also plan to ship LPG from Mac Point via rail. Residents of Searsport are divided over whether the 12 or so full-time jobs the facility would bring and the temporary construction jobs would offset potentially detrimental impacts on tourism and property values. Many residents have expressed concerns about safety and questioned whether a small-town volunteer fire department and a town with no hospital is equipped to handle a propane fire or explosion. At two recent public meetings concerning the issue, uh, people also voiced concerns about the impact on air quality in the region, road repairs, traffic conditions, and the structural integrity of historic buildings along Route 1. In addition, DCP has been accused of meddling in town affairs by lobbying against a moratorium that voters in Searsport will take up at their town meeting next month. And finally, it appears that the final say in this matter may lie in the hands of six Searsport town selectmen, and residents of the surrounding towns may have no say in the matter at all. 
DCP has been meeting with state agencies for months, and at the meeting on January 26, their environmental specialist, Becky Malloy, said that they are being given nods of approval as they navigate the permitting process. It has been a very lengthy process. We started a little over a year ago. Um, we've been meeting with a lot of various agencies at all different levels in the government. We've also invited a lot of those agencies to come out to the site and visit so that they could get a better feel for the land and, and the project in general. Some of the agencies that we've met with include um, the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, the Maine Department of, Ma of, the Maine Department of Marine Resources, Maine Department of Conservation, Maine Natural Areas Program, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, as well as the National Marine Fisheries Service. Now, none of those agencies actually issue a permit, but all of them have concluded that our project would have no adverse impact on any of the resources that they are responsible for, for taking care of. Now, as for permits, um, we have had to, to apply for several of those. At the federal level, uh, we've been working very closely with the U.S. Co Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, we've submitted an application to them. We also provided some supplemental information to them a couple of weeks ago per their request, and we're expecting them to be issuing us a pure permit sometime in the very near future. We've also had to apply for several state permits. There's a site law permit, as well as a natural resource protection or an NRPA permit. We also needed to apply for an uh, air emission license. Now, I've got to tell you, I've been permitting these type facilities in probably 20 <coughs> different states, and I've never seen a process like what you guys have up here in Maine. It's, it's really been very incredible uh, process to, to work through. Uh, when I tried to start explaining this to, to senior management a year ago, I basically said that the system is kind of like on steroids because we were required to submit so much information. And the good news in that is that with all the information that we've uh, supplied in our applications, the main Department of Environmental Protection was able to do a very robust and very comprehensive review of our permits. And after they, they completed their, their evaluation and everything, they did go ahead and they issued our site law permit, they've issued the NRPA permit, and they also issued our um, air emission license. So where do we go from here? Um, our next step really is to apply to the town of Searsport. And I know there's been some questions as to why we haven't applied sooner. Um, it's not that we're trying to be secretive or anything like that, but in your ordinance, it does require us to obtain all of our federal and state permits before we can even apply to the town of Searsport. And so that's what we're... That's what we're waiting on right now. Once we've, we've got all of our state permits, once we get the federal permit, we will be submitting a permit to the, the town of Searsport. Uh, again, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with that permit, it is a very extensive permit application. We will be providing a lot of information, uh, and we will be working very closely with your building department and with your elected officials to make sure that we meet the very high standards that have been set out in front of us. And in the end, I mean, they are the ones who will be deciding whether or not this project goes forward. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is seeking public comment regarding the company's permit application. They're specifically concerned with the wetlands uh, and the mitigation proposal that the company has put forth. And you can send those in prior to February 29th if you have comments one way or the other. I want to turn now to our guests here in the studio and give each of them a chance to give an overview of why they support or oppose the facility. We'll get into the specifics later on as we go on through this program tonight. And uh, we'll open up the phone lines after they each have a chance to tell you where they're coming from in terms of the project. And we'll get into the specifics then. Let's start with Astrid Tangway. She's a local uh, Searsport resident and local business owner. Welcome, Astrid, again. Uh